Hi, I'm Matt Cheney with Larson Systems Racing Division, and today I'm going to talk about the basics of our VST series spring testers. VST stands for valve spring tester, and it comes in three different varieties. It comes with the VST 200, the VST 750, and the VST 1500, which is the one I'm going to show you guys today. For those of you that don't know, Larson Systems has been around for over 40 years, and we specialize in spring testing. Larson Systems has traditionally been around in the spring testing manufacturing market. So it's not uncommon that if you get a valve spring in your shop that it came off of one of the Larson System valve springs somewhere in its past. Um, today I'm just going to show you a little bit demo about how to use a spring tester in a typical like engine builder shop um, and just one way. To, there's lots of different ways to test springs, but today I'm going to show you one way and give you guys an example of how to use this tester. So what I have over here is a cylinder head that's set up. Um, this is a big block Chevy cylinder head, and I've got a height mic set up on the valve. Um, so I'm measuring the distance from the, where the, the seat of where the bottom of the spring sits to the retainer. And in this case, on this cylinder head, I've got the, the measurement of 2 inch 120. So I keep that in mind as I'm setting up my spring. Um, some guys traditionally would uh, set this up and, and set the spring in here with the retainer. It's always important if you're using double or triple valve springs to use the retainer while you test because the retainer holds shape of these steps with the two different valve springs and, it, and it'll keep your spring rates consistent. If you, if you test without a retainer, you're likely to get significantly bad readings. So um, I'm gonna set this in here. Now, Larson Systems offers a product as an option for this spring tester called the Valve Spring Retainer Puck Set. Now this is really nice because it, it, it alleviates the reason to do math on the retainer. So if I bring this, this the tester down and I zero it out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first zero it out on my, my puck to show you guys. Zero. I'm going to set my retainer in place. And you'll notice I have 105, about 105 thousandths worth of retainer. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually zero my length out, and that's going to allow me to not have to worry about that 105 thousandths thickness as I'm testing the spring. All I do is I pull the retainer back out, I flip the puck back over, and now I can test between these two platforms. I don't have to worry about that, that height. So the first thing I would do is I'm going to bring my spring down to the installed spring height, so the same the same height as my height mic is going to show, which in this case is 2 inch 120. There you go. This spring happens to have 287 pounds. What I like to do is actually re-zero my machine. So zero length. Okay, now my base is zero and that's my installed height. Now the next thing to think about is how much valve lift do I have. That's based on a number of different factors. Um, your cam, your uh, rocker arm, your lash, those types of things. So you'll have to figure those things out separately. In this case, I'm going to pick a number of uh, 800 lift. That's probably pretty common in this type of application. So I'm going to go to 0 0.800. You'll see now that I can go right to 800. Now that's my valve lift. I don't have to think about any other numbers other than that. And my open pressure is going to be 748. Some people will call that over to the nose pressure. Another thing to do is to check your coil bind. So if I zero my length out again, now I can go down until my coil actually binds. When the, the coil bind is when the coils actually touch each other. And you can see that's 0.182. So I have 182 thousands to coil bind, which in most applications would be more than reasonable. You can, do, you can do a lot of different things with this tester. You can, you can also buy our optional spring data collector software. What this allows you to do is you can, if I go back to my height, is you can actually send the data to the software. A lot of guys traditionally write stuff down on the bench or use a piece of paper. Um, this just allows you to be able to just send the data directly to that. You can actually send data Maybe you have two data points. One would be your, your seat pressure and one would be your open pressure, valve open pressure. And you can actually graph and you can actually see what your spring rate would be. 
Um, some guys like to use this because you can test a set of eight or 16 springs and you can actually see if a spring is not, not in line with another one of the springs. One thing I want to show you is the stop rod set. This is another option that Larson System sells. So I'm going to get this set back up, get my zeros set back up on this. Go down, I'm going to zero out my retainer. I'm going to come up. I'm going to rotate my puck back to the other side. Put my retainer in the spring. Come up here. Go to my 2 inch 120 height. And I'm going to set up the first stop rod, the, set, the one on the left, the one that has a hole in it. I'm going to come down and I'm going to set that up. I've already set this up for you so you don't have to watch me do it. But 2 inch 120. Okay. Now I can zero my length. Now I can slide this over so that the stop rod is allowed to go through the hole. And I can go to my other, my other number, which is 800 lift, and adjust the rod into place. There we go. The nice thing about the stop rod is if I'm doing more than one spring, I can set it up and then I can just grab my next spring. Put the retainer in it. Make sure that the slider is in the right position. Come down. There's my seat pressure. Come down to my over the nose pressure. Really simple. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you're ready to buy or just looking for more information, please visit LarsonSystems.com.